Up until this point, we've been integrating with just one variable, either dx or dy, with just the one variable we're interested in. Today, we're going to extend that and answer the question, how do we integrate with respect to two variables? And this is going to be really similar to when we did partial derivatives, just in the x direction or just in the y direction. Just as we did with partial derivatives when we treated the other variable like a constant, we're going to do the same thing with two variables. We're going to treat the other variable as a constant. So for example, you'll see something like the integral from maybe a to b of the integral from c to d of some function that has two variables in it, f of x, y, dx, dy. When we see this, there's actually going to be an implied parentheses around the center integral. What that's really telling us to do is we're going to take that center integral and do this part first with the other variable treated as a constant. So here, since it says dx, we're integrating with respect to x. And we'll do that first, treating all the y's like they're a constant. Then when we're done, we'll put the integral from a to b dy around that. And we will do that part second. And actually, there's no reason we have to do the dx first. We actually could see something like the integral from c to d of the integral from a to b of our f of x, y. And we can do the dy first and then the dx. And just as before, there's an implied parentheses around the inside saying we're going to do that part first. And then we will do the outside integral second. But in this case, in example number two, we integrate with respect to y first. And then we integrate with respect to x second. So the order is determined by whether we see the dx first or the dy first. And just as before, when we were taking an integral, when we took the integral from a to b of f of x dx, what that meant is there was some graph that went from a to b. And we were finding the area underneath that curve. Well, now we're taking the integral from a to b of the integral from c to d of some function f of x, y, dx, dy. Because we have two variables, we're going to add another dimension. And so there's going to be this two-dimensional shape, which I will try to draw this two-dimensional shape that is hanging out over three-dimensional space. And that two-dimensional shape is going to drop down and give us this three-dimensional volume that we're finding the area on as our x-axis goes from a to b, and the y-axis goes from c to d. And that's that three-dimensional volume we're finding underneath a curve. We'll spend a lot more time in Calc 4 really digging into the meat of what's behind this concept. But here in Calc 2, we're just going to be interested in, can we take the double integrals? Can we do the inside integral first and the outside integral second? 
So let's try a few examples and see if we can do just that. Let's take the integral from 1 to 2 of the integral from 0 to 2 of xy minus 3xy squared dx dy. And what we know is that there is an implied parentheses saying we're going to do that center integral first, dx. Because we're integrating with respect to x, we will treat the other variable, the y, as if it was a constant. So when we see xy, we know we raise the exponent by 1 and multiply by the reciprocal. So we get 1 half x squared times the constant of y minus, again, x becomes x squared times 1 half. So we end up with 3 halves times the constant of y squared. And then we're going to integrate this from 0 to 2. And what I usually do with a double integral is I'll also put equals x. That way I remember I'm plugging 2 and 0 in for the x. Leave the y alone as a constant. So plugging the 2 in, we end up with 1 half times 2 squared times y minus 3 halves times 2 squared times y squared. And then we'd subtract and plug 0 in. But what's nice is when we plug 0 in, we get 0. So we're subtracting 0 and then adding 0. Simplifying then, 2 squared is 4 divided by 2 is 2y minus 2 squared is 4 divided by 2 is 2 times 3 is 6y squared. Now we're ready to do the outside integral. We're taking the integral from 1 to 2 dy to finish this off. And this way, it almost becomes two integration problems in 1. We now have y squared. Divide by 2 divides out that 2. Subtract y cubed. 6 divided by 3 is 2. And we're integrating from 1 to 2. And this time, that 1 to 2 is equal to our y, because we're integrating dy. So we plug 2 in. We get 2 squared minus 2 times 2 cubed. And then we'll subtract and plug the 1 in. 1 squared plus 2 times 1 cubed, which is 4 minus 16 minus 1 plus 2 equals negative 11. So this is actually below uh, the x and y axis. Uh, negative 11 is going to be the total volume underneath this curve, xy minus 3xy squared. As I said before, we can integrate with respect to x first and then y like we did in this example. Or we can switch the order of integration, actually do the dy first and then the dx. What I can do is if I switch the order of the integration, I just have to switch the order of the integrals. And I should still get the same exact thing. So I'm going to switch that for number 2 here and see if we get the same exact thing. We're going to do the integral first from 0 to 2, then the integral from 1 to 2 of our function, xy minus 3xy squared. And then we're going to switch the integration order, dy dx. So the same problem, but we've switched the order of integration. Again, we're going to start by doing the inside integral. But this time, it's dy. This time, we'll treat the x's like a constant. So we have our constant of x. The integral of y is y squared times a half minus the integral of y squared is y cubed divided by 3 gets rid of the 3. So we have xy cubed. And this time, we're going to integrate from 1 to 2. But that's going to be equal to our y, because we were integrating first with respect to the y. 
So plugging 2 in for the y, we get 1 half x times 2 squared minus x times 2 cubed. Then subtract. We'll plug the 1 in. 1 half x times 1 squared. And then finally, plus x times 1 cubed. Simplifying that, 2 squared is 4. Divided by 2 is 2x. Minus 2 cubed is 8x minus 1 half x plus 1x. And this is really nice for us because those are all like terms. We have 2 minus 8 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 is negative 5, or negative 10 halves. Minus 1 half is negative 11 halves x. And now that we've simplified dy, we're ready to take our last integral, dx, the integral from 0 to 2, dx, which gives us x squared times negative 11 over 4. And this time, we're integrating from 0 to 2 equal to our x. Plugging 2 in, we get negative 11 fourths times 2 squared. Minus, plugging 0 in, we get 0. 2 squared is 4 divided by 4 times negative 11. We get the exact same solution, integrating in the opposite order. Let's take a look at another example that sets up a nice property that can help us as we are simplifying our integrals. Let's take the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of e to the y cosine x dx dy. Off to the side here, I'm going to write an important property that's going to help us is if we have the double integral of a function with respect to x times a function with respect to y dx dy. Because the y's are a constant when we're integrating with respect to x, we can pull those out of that integral. Same with the dy. In other words, we end up with the integral of g of y dy times the integral of f of x dx. And we can do those integrals individually and then multiply the product because we know we can pull a constant out in front of the integral. And that's exactly what we have here. You see we've got an e to the y and a cosine x multiplied together. So let's separate those dx is first, so the x part stays in the first integral of 0 to pi over 2 of cosine of x dx. And then we multiply, pulling the other one through, the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the y dy. And now we can integrate those individually. The integral of e to the y is e to the y integrated from 0 to 1 equals y. And the integral of cosine is sine integrated from 0 to pi over 2 equals x. So we end up with e to the first power minus e to the 0 power, which is 1, times the sine of pi over 2, which is 1, minus the sine of 0 which is 0, which ends up simplifying to 1 minus 0 is 1. And 1 times anything just gives us the e minus 1 for our total volume under this curve. So it's a really nice, powerful trick that we can pull the product apart and just focus on the x's and the y's if they're separated. I want to be careful not to confuse this, though, with problems like this. Let's do the integral from 0 to 1 of the integral from 0 to 2 
of 2x minus 2y dy dx. Here, yes, the x's and the y's are separate from each other. The problem is that they're not multiplied by each other. We do not have a product of a constant and our variable. So we cannot pull this one apart. We have to solve this one integral at a time. So first, we're integrating dy. 2x is just a constant. If we were integrating 2, the antiderivative of 2 is 2y. Similarly, the antiderivative of 2x, a constant, is 2xy minus y squared times a half gets rid of the 2. Integrated from 0 to 2 is equal to ry. Plugging 2 in for the y, we have 2x times 2 minus 2 squared, or 4x minus 4. We don't have to plug the 0 in because that gives us 0 when we plug the 0 in this time. Now that we're done with the inside integral, we're ready to do the outside integral. And we'll integrate from 0 to 1 dx, which gives us x squared divided by 2 leaves behind 2 minus 4x. And this time, we're going to integrate from 0 to 1 equals x. Plugging 1 in, we get one times one, 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1, which is 2 minus 4, which gives us negative 2. Again, we didn't have to subtract the 0 because that gives us just 0 behind. And we end up with our final solution. So that's all it takes to integrate. With respect to two variables, we start with the inside one, treating the other variable as a constant. And then we work on the outside one, treating the other variable as a constant. Some of these can get a little messy with the arithmetic and algebra, so it's important that you get really good at practicing these. Take a look at the homework assignment, and then we'll take a look at these problems in more detail in class. We will see you then.